Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. So thanks for having the attention after some lunch. So I hope that attention carries for the next 15 to 20 minutes. So here I'm going to talk uh, about uh, our uh, topic, which is to estimate mutational signature exposure from sparse clinical data. So I'm Arnav, and uh, we are a research group of computation, computational cancer biology from the Center of uh, Cancer Research, Colon Essen, and uh, our university site is Arvateha Aachen. Yeah, so um, let's give you a brief introduction. So what mutational signatures are. So basically, mutational signatures, which many of you know, or if you don't know, um, they are basically the somatic mutation patterns dep depicting the underlying processes of genetic alternations. And I mean, they can occur within the genome of an organism, or these mutations can result fr uh, from various processes, including DNA damages, replication errors, exposure to mutagens, a deficiency in D DNA uh, repair mechanisms. So they're uh, basically um, driven by several factors. And uh, for example, some endogenous factors, uh, which uh, is, for example, tobacco smoking or exposure to ultra ultraviolet radiation. And these images of this mutation over time is represented in form of the snapshot, which we often uh, catalog as mutational signatures. Uh, so the, um, there are novel uh, frameworks uh, for uh, uh, estimating these uh, signatures, for example, based on non-negative matrix factorization that was developed to decipher uh, distinct mutational signatures across these cancer genomes. And uh, this is also very essential for making cl uh, uh, cl for clinical decision makings. So uh, let's understand with an example. Um, so basically, um, Um, so these signatures, they uh, reflect uh, mutations in the context of this base pair uh, neighbors. Yeah? So in principle, there are six uh, pairs of the somatic base pair substitutions. And uh, we want to look at what neighbors in uh, the sequence are of the mutation. So this gives the actual signature. So basically, the mutation signature, which we see here, is a snapshot of mutation over a timeline in context to their base pair neighbors. And uh, this has been uh, uh, well uh, documented and cataloged into this uh, cosmic database. So uh, why we care about mutational signatures? Because they have some clinical significances. And uh, the, uh, one of the major significance of it is ca cancer classification diagnosis. So mutational signatures, they provide an important insight, not only uh, for the underlying processes that drive the development and the pr uh, progression of uh, different types of cancer, but also for analyzing the specific uh, pattern of mutations present in tumor samples. So researchers uh, are able to classify the cancers into distinct subtypes and also aiding in accurate diagnosis and uh, targeted treatment selections. So apart from that, uh, they're also helpful for treatment response monitoring, epidemiological studies, early detection and screening, and also direct therapeutic and prognostic insights. So to summarize, prevention, uh, for example, to establish correlation between environmental factors and mutations are helping in the prevention of cancer for, and treatment, for example, to identify different subtypes of patients based on these signatures. Several of the literatures uh, are present, which highlight these uh, clinical significance. And that's kind of proves that uh, this is something which we want to look into it. So, uh, so we have actually studied uh, the effect of these mutational signatures and kind of uh, uh, um, derived our research focus. So one of the main uh, focus is the presence of this short panel data. So this is a channel. So how can we uh, extract this short panel data from signatures inferences instead of the whole genome coverages? And uh, based on that, we have derived some of our uh, um, research uh, challenges which we address. The first, uh, very first of that would be to how do we transition from this whole genome coverage uh, to an inferring mutational signatures for short regions. Next important question that we highlight, uh, that we take into our consideration is to what extent uh, extraction strategies that needs to be adapted to enhance uh, these uh, mutational insights. Next, we look into the uh, signals which contain more weightage across the whole genome. So not all the signals in the mutation in the signature catalog are kind of. Uh, 
uh, have the same uh, impact. So we need to somehow uh, give some weightage to some signals. And uh, lastly, we uh, need to identify uh, how to efficiently extract the signals for tumors or for, with low mutational burdens. So uh, some of the proposed solutions that we have uh, addressed in our work would be to identify the, the statistical significant signals that we call them and based on this uh, some estimated thresholds. Next, uh, we estimate the informative regions uh, representing the short genome sequences containing mutational burden using a predictive modeling approach. And finally, we experimentally ver uh, verify uh, the effectiveness of our proposed model uh, by uh, comparing ex exposure estimates. So here, uh, first, we would give a, a big picture of our overall model that we have proposed. And uh, then we would go uh, step by step explaining each of the parts. So at very first, uh, uh, functionality of our model is the data integration part. So it, it's, it's not that um, um, like uh, we didn't solve any research challenges uh, with this part, but the, it was a very important uh, um, piece of the puzzle because we needed some uh, um, uh, some uh, data database to solve the, some data integration challenges. For example, ingesting data from several uh, structures, for example, the map files, and integrating them into the single schema. Yeah, so we have uh, taken. Uh, Sorry, we have taken the data from the cosmic data uh, data sources, and uh, also from the different uh, cohorts like the ICGC and the TCGA the, uh, data sources, and then we have integrated them into a single uh, SQL schema. Uh, for uh, yeah, so the advantage of doing it was that we could implement uh, fast joins and complex queries that were uh, useful for better exploration of this data. The next uh, part is the core functionality of our model, where we have uh, implemented our uh, uh, modeling approach. So this here, we apply the predictive modeling approach. And the first uh, one uh, functionality is the, we extract uh, features. So features here, I mean that uh, we determine the statistically significant uh, uh, info, uh, signals, which we can also term as informative signals from the mutational signatures. And, we, uh, and these... Uh, Extracted features are essential because we are eliminating uh, uh, this background background noise or background mutations. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, next, uh, we also here um, extract the mutations based on the signature weightage. So we give some weightage on the different signatures, and uh, based on our inferences, we train our um, a model to identify certain regions, which we call the hit regions, which are more, uh, which have more pro probability of you know, certain mutations to occur. And uh, finally, we train and test our models because the tuning of the hyperparameters of uh, is essential uh, for the error estimation. Uh, error estimation, and for that, we do several tests. For example, some ablation studies, estimating information loss, and also error estimation. So just to tune uh, the, mo the the model. <coughs> Okay, so how to determine the peak signals? So uh, mutational signatures are, have similar frequencies across several parts, resulting in some overlapping uh, signals. And they are hard for analysis of uh, cancer types because they are represented by several signals, which are uh, which have, uh, as you can see in the picture, they have overlapping regions. And it's uh, essential for us to study uh, how we can remove the back, uh, background noise. So uh, we propose a statistical model for extraction of the uh, significant signals. Here we consider the signals for all cancer types and then make them uh, like a tailored selection for significant signals for each of the individual mutations. And uh, we use the feature selection uh, extraction model for uh, using the cosmic signatures. Uh, so uh, I won't go into the details, but we are up for uh, discussion because here we actually uh, implement our uh, novel uh, signal extraction algorithm, which is using k-mint clustering for uh, position uh, for clustering all the start positions of the mutations in the uh, cancer genome and uh, <clears throat> implementing a KNN classifier to calculate the misclassification based on the Z, Z testings. Yeah, so we still uh, in the in the figure we can see that the. Uh, <clears throat> We do the Z test testing and uh, determining the threshold. So, and uh, for each of the iterations, we cal uh, we calculate uh, <coughs> the misclassifications, and uh, based on the lowest misclassification value value or the rate, we select uh, the number of mutations here. 
So the next we uh, what we uh, in our step we uh, uh, introduce the concept of estimating genomic windows. So the basic concept is that in the in the entire gene sequence we select uh, specific regions which uh, are high uh, which are high probability of some certain mutations to occur, and we uh, do this by the concept uh, of uh, a, a window based concept. Yeah. So we select a window size, and then uh, based on that window size we calculate the number of mutations here and uh, we see that uh, which which window is more informative and which window is not and uh, this we also do it with, uh, based on a workflow so we calculate the frequency counts of the mutations in the selected windows <coughs> we determine the window size then we, we determine how many numbers of uh, windows we uh, require and then uh, we mark the start positions of the window we calculate the mutational frequencies uh, de uh, depending <coughs> on the on the on, on the selected windows and finally we'll uh, uh, identify them as informative or non-informative windows so basically uh, what we what i said in uh, in this workflow has been uh, uh, done with the help of an algorithm or, or uh, 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 which uh, calculates the uh, which calculates a score which we define as a closeness score so this is basically the uh, the frequency counts of each of the mutations uh, in the in the genomic regions and how close they are to the cosmic signatures and these b based on these closeness score we can actually determine our threshold so how whether the signals are uh, which we are de de deriving from the patient cohorts uh, Ha has some uh, closeness to the cosmic signatures that were already cataloged and we can uh, see in which region the signals are present and uh, based on this, re uh, this score we can determine whether uh, this window is an informative window or not. So we, I, so the next we have to identify informative region based on the genomic sequences. So what we do is so we load all the sorted start positions based on the specific SBS types. So the SBS type is the mutational signature type, and we split the start position of window of equal width. So we count the frequency of the mutational signatures in each of these windows, and uh, if the uh, frequency is uh, greater than the threshold frequency, then we select them, or else we uh, uh, mark them as non-informative windows. So you can see in this picture there are this genomic windows has been identified as informative uh, <coughs> window regions and uh, the red dots which are not in inside the informative windows are uh, are mutations which are present but they are uh, they are in the non-informative zone so we just uh, dis dis discard them the final the final step of our model is to tra train and test the predictive mo uh, model so we uh, we find these re different regions we feed them into our predictive model and we train them and uh, the, uh, with the main focus that the model is able to kind of identify these uh, regions correctly so how uh, did we evaluate our uh, uh, study so I would say that uh, this talk is more towards the goal of the predictive modeling. So we are trying to build a model which would serve a purpose of identifying the correct regions. And the first uh, aim is to see whether the input that we had fed the, fed, fed the model uh, of these uh, signatures, which having signals in a, uh, uh, which having the extracted signal, uh, somehow compensates the information loss. So for example, uh, in, in the uh, right, you can see this is the uh, signatures taken from the cosmic data set and uh, we have not performed the signal, uh, signal extraction here and it uh, and here the idea is to give the similarity among the uh, different signatures using a, a distant metric which is the Euclidean distant metric so we can see that some certain patterns are observable here and uh, next in the left we have uh, done, uh, done the same thing with our extracted uh, signals and we see that uh, the patterns are preserved, and as well as we have uh, we have uh, had further insights about the uh, similarity between the different mutations. So you can see in the right that some of the mutation uh, signatures have uh, high similarity, but that that uh, is not well uh, depicted. So they are kind of uh, uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the dark regions. So here we can. Uh, Finally, clearly segregate the different signatures based on uh, based on the similarity measures. The next study we have performed is to uh, estimate the signature uh, burden across the genomic uh, sequences. So we have uh, <coughs> extracted the uh, signals from different mutations and uh, tried to ca calculate uh, or tried to estimate. Uh, 
what in what positions of the genomic regions is the uh, is what which type of signatures are more uh, prominent so we have done it across the all all the signatures in the uh, present in the cosmic because of the overlap i have just uh, 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 zoomed in uh, one of the one of the plots which is uh, depicting the signature from sbs1 to sbs7 and this is like a more uh, clear version of it. So here we can see that uh, there are certain regions, for example, uh, so this is like the 3 billion best pairs. So from uh, uh, half a billion to 1 billion, the, the signatures from at least from 1 to 7 have their uh, highest influences. And in this, we can also see the different regions. And it also confirms with the genomic positions uh, based on the window. Yeah, so the frequency counts. And uh, finally, we do some uh, ablation study to estimate our model. So this is just a recap because uh, this is from the um, this is the, one of the famous uh, uh, formulas to uh, uh, derive nutritional signatures. Uh, they are uh, yeah, they are using this uh, formula where m is the number of nutritional counts. E is the exposures, that's the effect of the mutations on, on patients or different patient cohorts, and uh, uh, P is the signatures. So the, uh, this equation is, been fed in, uh, is calculated using non-negative matrix factorization, and uh, we derive the signatures. So what we do here is that we know the mutational counts from the patient cohorts that we use. So we use the ICGC and the PCOG data set, and we use the, uh, get the signatures from the cosmic model and from our model, that is the reduced uh, uh, signature model. And then we uh, estimate the exposures, and we see uh, somehow uh, the effect of, of that. So what we can see here is that uh, we have the window number one, which is basically the entire genome. So we have not uh, partitioned it into any window. And then we have uh, 32 as, uh, uh, sorry, 16 as, uh, uh, as the number of windows, which was derived from our model, the optimal window, and 32 as uh, are just a random window to see the effect. And we see that the exposure, uh, so the blue line is kind of hidden because it it's kind of merges with the window number 16. So it has the least RMS scores. And this is also uh, uh, based on the signature and based on the do different donors. We also see that the mutation, uh, <laughs> that the RMS score for the uh, window number 16 is much less than 32. And so what are the key takeaways from uh, the study that we have done? So. We are on our way to determine the significant uh, signals for each of the uh, si uh, signatures in the cosmic mutational catalog. So uh, also we have determined the underlying relations among different mutational uh, signatures. We have highlighted or tried to highlight the mutational burden. So there, I would say I use the word tried because there are still some work to do in this area. We have identified the informative regions of the genome that have high number of context specific mutations. We have also determined the effectiveness of the sparse window-based modeling approach in extracting mutations without significant information loss. So I would stress on the word without uh, significant information loss because uh, this is uh, from our study. Uh, we have uh, evaluated the effect of this, info uh, of this feature extraction on the information loss, but still, still we need to perform more experimentation to kind of reach to an optimal solution. Okay, I not need to acknowledge my lab members, uh, Hiroshi, Lancelot, Richao, and Dr. Lehman. And we would also like to acknowledge the ICGC Peacock Consortium for providing us with the uh, patient cohort data. And uh, our work has been funded by the Cancer Col uh, Center Colon Essen by the Ministry of North rhine westphalia in Germany. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. Um, let's, let me start with an online question. Um, I encourage to uh, continue posting online as well. Uh, how did you summarize mutations at gene levels? Have you filtered low quality or non-pathogenic mutations? Uh, you said it too fast. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> how did you summarize mutation at gene level? And have you filtered low quality or non-pathogenic mutations? Ah, OK. So interesting question. So. Uh, we, we have actually uh, filtered the, uh, so if I understood you correctly, so at the gene level, uh, so, uh, okay, so uh, we collected this information of the mutations from the, uh, specifically based on the different patient cohorts uh, by the ICGC and the DCGA. So, and then uh, we uh, have, we, the, our vision is to filter it also on the gene level, but at, pre at present, we are just doing it on the patient level. So we have not filtered it on the gene level, so. 
Thank you for your talk. Mm -hmm. I have two questions, if I may. The first, uh, some signatures are notoriously flat. How did you deal with those in your model? Ah, yes, exactly. So uh, based on the statistical uh, estimation, so the signatures which are flat, uh, we are calculating the extraction dynamically for each of the signatures. Uh, so for example, let's say signature uh, 32, which has some flat uh, uh, signals. These are getting automatically eliminated from the model because if you remember the curve, so we are only selecting a threshold, everything above the threshold we are selecting and everything below in the threshold we are just eliminating. Um, and how would you approach extraction in uh, CT DNA of signatures? If you had circulating free DNA, we, we struggle with this. How would you approach uh, getting signatures from those? Hmm, interesting question. So this we have not thought yet, but uh, definitely an interesting aspect to look into it. Hello, thanks for the talk. Uh, this is a, a more practical question. Since the, the focus is clinical, in the clinic, usually you don't go for the, the, that many uh, genes tested. How, how small can you get for, for how how small you can uh, your how many genes or uh, how many how small your panels can get and uh, for uh, when your algorithm still, still is effective or ceases to be effective yeah, because sure. usually my experience uh, clinic clinicians don't go for more than a handful a hundred of genes at most. Yeah, so uh, this uh, this question exactly relates to the number of the, uh, uh, of the of the window, the size of the window that we, our algorithm is estimating. So we have an, uh, in the algorithm we have a way of calculating the optimal window size. For example, till now we have reduced it to be sixteen. But uh, this uh, this is also like the more the model is efficient, the more optimal the window size can get, and the, the smaller it, uh, the window will get. And then we, I think your answer you will get your answer like how can but still now we have not deduced to the uh, rock bottom level like okay uh, we need that we cannot go so yeah how do you remove different uh, haplotypes uh, to filter uh, somatic mutations haplotypes uh, different haplotypes in population ah, populations. um again something which we have not uh, uh, considered so we uh, just uh, we got just to use the model on the entire patient cohorts, but uh, uh, it was not on this hypothetical level. So we did not filter this. But again, it's also an important direction that can give maybe better estimation of this window sizes. Yes, definitely. Hi. So uh, you have mentioned like panel sequencing in general. Did you use uh, the same panel in all um, the samples that you have uh, targeted sequencing? Was it done with the same biotechnological, uh, the same biotechnology in all cases, or was it so more did, than one? Uh, so uh, our group which worked on this did not do the sequencing. Yeah. So as okay. I said, so we only implemented the conceptual version of the model and used the ICGC uh, data from there. But uh, yes, to make the model more robust, we need to train it on the more gene sequencing, and that uh, is uh, to, something on the to, to do. Okay, thank you.